Hello everybody, I hope you are all doing very well and welcome back to another cryptocurrency technical analysis where I have a very good one for you today going through the thesis of is the bottom in for Bitcoin? So I really hope that you enjoy this one because it is going to be packed with a lot of information. I'm going to be starting off with why we broke up for Bitcoin, then moving on to my targets for Bitcoin. Thirdly, I'll be going through my personal trades for Bitcoin and then I will be ending with looking at some altcoins including Walton Chain, ENG and Stellar Lumens XLM. So I really hope that you do enjoy this one uh, because it is going to be packed with so much information for you all. So, yeah, firstly, let's go over the massive, 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 massive move up that we have seen in here on Bitcoin and then how you could potentially be trading this right now. So, yeah. Obviously, over the last week or so, I had been bringing your attention. Let me mute this for you all. I had been bringing your attention to the patterns that had been playing out on the Bitcoin chart that were obviously bullish. Uh, obviously, on the 29th of March, I pointed out this inverse head and shoulders, uh, and this was with the left shoulder, the head, and then we were on the potential of the right shoulder coming up, uh, you know, a few days ago here. Uh, when we were, yeah, we're just looking at this inverse head and shoulders, obviously a bullish reversal pattern that you get after a big downtrend, then a inverse head and shoulders coming up to that resistance, breaking through, you then get a big move up. And subsequently, this target actually played out extremely nicely. Um, you got within $100 of the target, slightly over. Uh, and then we, I was obviously get, pointing out the trend lines, and this was where I entered into a long position on Bitcoin. Obviously, I was holding shorts as well, but I'll cover those later. Uh, but yeah, this was obviously where I entered into the long when this uh, trend line resistance was broken. Then I back tested, and then I entered into that Bitcoin long way back on the 27th of March. This was okay. And then this was just one that I posted over on um, da, 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 on TradingView, uh, which you can come over and look. This was the last chart that I posted here for Bitcoin, saying is the bottom in for Bitcoin after breaking above those trend lines. And as you can see here, we broke over trend line one, trend line two. Then we broke over trend line two. Two, two days later, we get a massive pump. So yeah, if you're interested in coming along and going on TradingView, that was my last entry that I posted for Bitcoin right there. Um, so now we'll go over on the charts where we've gone up to here and yeah, just fully, fully examining this because I think it's very interesting, the regions that we've come up to and then thinking about the potential now of where is this going next? Because it's going to be a brilliant, brilliant week of trading, really a month of trading. It's going to be so volatile. This whole cryptocurrency market, you, you really don't want to take your eye off it for a second because it's going to be amazing to trade. Um, so yeah, let's go over this here. All I want to say, let's go back to the Bitcoin chart. So this is Bitcoin on Bitfinex we're going through here. Okay, and obviously this was just, let's just show you first. Let's clear up a few things here. So I'll cover this Elliott wave count in the video. I'll cover the extensions and the retracements. Let's go through the inverse head and shoulders first for you all. Okay, so let's go over here to the daily and I'll just cover this, uh, the targets obviously that we were going through. So the target for the inverse head and shoulders is very simply taken from the bottom of the head to the neckline and then you, you'd clone it. So, okay, so we're taking the inverse head and shoulders, bottom of the head to the top of the head, cloning this, moving it to the breakout, and you can see how close we got to the target. Okay, so the target was around 5,000, obviously the top here being 5,144. So it got within $144 of the inverse head and shoulders pattern. Um, so there's that covered, uh, so I can close that tab. Okay, so that's firstly that I wanted to show you all that this inverse head and shoulders um, was very nice and obviously played out totally fine. Uh, and this was the thing. I don't know if you can all remember, that, but there was a lot of talk about this inverse head and shoulders back in January. And this was one that everybody was talking about. And when everybody talks about a pattern, it doesn't play out. And this was a pattern that, you know, I literally hadn't seen another trader talk about uh, this inverse head and shoulders. And then this one played out. So, um, yeah, this is why you have to find patterns that nobody else talks about. Uh, and obviously it played out extremely nicely. So that was the, you know, reason number one that we were breaking up and the targets that you could have got from this. Obviously, if you had traded this inverse head and shoulders, you would now be out of the long and you would have actually closed out extremely nicely because obviously from that, that target, we are now down uh, 5%. So, you know, uh, yeah, extremely, extremely nice target I highlighted there. Uh, so that's the inverse head and shoulders. Then obviously I would like to cover these trend lines. Uh, so I've removed them on my trading view here. So these trend lines that we're on about here. Okay. And this is the two trend lines that we're looking at here is taken from the 19th of January. So over one year ago. And the second trend line that I still have my chart here is from the 4th of May. Okay. So here we're taking the trend line from the 4th or 5th of May. Okay. 5th of May extended down onto the 25th of July, extended down to the 6th of uh, 6th, 7th of November. 
as you all know, that that was for me a really big signal that, you know, you have to imagine this was a trend line that's been holding us down for over a year. The January trend line, obviously over one year, had been holding us down. So breaking above these trend lines, um, you know, is a massive important, you know, a massive, you know, you have to give a really big uh, importance to breaking above such trend lines that are holding you down for a whole year. I would say that that's what brought the attention to me of, of speculating that the bottom was in for Bitcoin, breaking above such important trend lines. So I will close that down now. That's talked about. Cool. Um, so, yeah, th that for me was really, really important. And, and those two factors together obviously uh, gave great importance to the reason that we broke up today. OK, thirdly, uh, we had obviously been seeing this great resistance area. OK, great resistance area um, that you would not, you know, Breaking above this resistance trend line has obviously given a really uh, strong push towards the bear market being over. OK, I will go through reasons of why we could say that it's not over. But this alone is obviously a really strong reason. Breaking above this this resistance, something, you know, finally made a higher high on the chart. As you all know, over the last year, it's just been lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, literally lower high, lower high, lower high. Slight, slight higher, slight higher high here, higher low then, and then we break up and form a higher high. So this in itself uh, is potentially very nice that we are seeing on the chart. There is definitely bullish signs here uh, without any shadow of a doubt. And that's why right now I am only in long positions, but I will explain this in a little bit. OK, what I want to go over here as well is that we have broken the 382 Fibonacci. OK, so that's simply taken from the high on the 7th of November here from obviously, you know, we get a swing high coming down to the swing low. OK, so taken down to the swing low. We have broken the 382 Fibonacci level. OK, so for me personally, that's very important. If we manage to actually break above the 382 Fib, um, yeah, that in itself is quite bullish being able to break above that. The, the, the 382 is generally a dead cat bounce. Hence why I was expecting 4,400 to be strong resistance. But if you look here on the hour, it really wasn't. <laughs> we went straight through it. OK, literally straight through that resistance. So that's that's big. That really is big. Uh, OK, and now we'll add in some indicators here. So we'll add in our four exponential moving averages. We're going to take a look at the 200, 55, 26 and 12 here. OK, so we are now above the 200 daily exponential moving average. OK, this is really big as well. So this you would have expected to act as resistance, but obviously price has gone straight through it. So now you would expect it to be down tested and potentially act as support here. You would expect it to be tested. OK, breaking through, coming down to retest it, potentially acting as support for then another move back up. OK, so this is really, really important sort of stuff that you need to be aware of, of where these EMAs are. Obviously, you know, really a strategy of mine is simply looking at the 55 EMA and looking at crossovers. And this 55 EMA did cross over back on the 8th of March. So that's another like bullish symbol that you have to be aware of. That was not my main trading strategy, by the way. Uh, but this is just one of many that I have. And, and it's seen the 55 EMA crossover and it literally did. And, you know, this strategy is, is very unbeatable. <laughs> OK, so it literally works so, so well. I should probably give it more importance. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that's just another metric that I use along with many others. Um, just, just you know, that there was bullish signs to, to definitely being seen here. You know, the trend lines, obviously, I haven't even mentioned this is another great one. H low, higher low, then continuous, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low, breakout. OK, so this in itself, let's draw this all out for you. Let's draw this out so you can all see this clearly, is obviously a ascending triangle okay that's not drew out 100% correctly here but you, you get the general scene that we've got obviously forming higher lows higher lows higher lows higher lows on one resistance level uh, that resistance obviously got tested if you if we bring this back back to the start a little bit off but you know, you get the general idea here, what I'm trying to draw. This resistance, obviously, the more times a resistance is tested, the weaker it gets. And we're specifically looking at this resistance here. OK, so the more times it gets tested, the yeah, definitely the, the weaker it does get. So there were signs there to be bullish. OK, hence why I entered into some long positions. Um, So, yeah, with that said, altcoins, yeah. Absolutely, I'm still trading altcoins. There's definitely potential in some of the altcoins to be had, um, especially if Bitcoin manages to hold the support here. OK, so what I would also like to cover is an Elliott wave count of the bottom being in, or even if you want to give it a slight push, potentially seeing this as an ABC, um, you know, extended, you know, an ABC. I'm going to go over a one, two, three, four, five in this video. Uh, what was interesting is... Um, I never got around to uploading this and I apologize, but I did have an Elliott Wave bull count with the bottom being in and uh, that was recorded on the 16th. So literally like two weeks ago um, and I never uploaded it. 
Uh, I had it in my list of uploads that I was going to do. So I will upload this video probably in the coming days. So it's like will be recorded from two weeks ago. But um, I'm going to co cover this slightly here. But I will upload the full Elliott Wave uh, ball count over the bottom in uh, in the coming days for you all. So you can see what my thoughts were, you know, back when I was recording that two weeks ago. So I will upload that in the next few days for you all. But here I'm just going to sh simply show you that a one, two, three, you know, potentially moving forward to that 200 EMA, coming up for another fifth wave where my, you know, real target is going to be seeing how we react here at the at the golden pocket. Okay, golden pocket is between 618 and 65. Okay, so here, let's add in the waves. So this is really clear. Okay, so we're looking here. Yeah, minor, that's moved us up to primary that we can see here a one, two, three, four, five potential. Okay, potential. Okay, the other way that we'd be looking at this is simply an A, a B and a C. Okay, to move back down. But let's see how it goes first. Let's wait for some confirmation. Okay. And what I would like to, you know, really show you here is how the target, I'm just going to remove the fibs and add in a, a Fibonacci extension because this is amazing. What is your target of a wave three? It's a one, six, one, eight. Can I just you have to have appreciation for Elliott Waves right now when I show you this. It's it's amazing. Okay. So the extension from the bottom of wave one to the top of wave one to the bottom of wave two. Okay. Bottom of wave two. You know, what did we hit, hit right here? We hit a 1618 extension to the absolute point. To the absolute point. Just absolutely perfect. Really is. Fibonacci extension with Elliott Waves. You know, amazing. Absolutely amazing. Hitting a 1618 absolutely perfectly. I know yet we could be counting this as the ABC with an extended C wave, uh, also hitting a 1618. So you have to be aware of this. But yeah, this is still uh, extremely nice to see from an Elliott Wave trader. Um, I, I love fibs and I love Elliott Waves. And, and to see this is, is really quite perfect. Um, so yeah, that you have to be aware of that. And then we would obviously be looking here for a, if you want to get in on a bullish retracement from the bottom of two to the top of three, okay, you'd be really looking in, you know, if you are very bullish, you would be buying actually right now on the 236. If you zoom in here, you would have definitely had potential uh, of a 236, you know, buy in right now. Okay, uh, I'm going to, none of my, this video is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. Please um, do consult a financial advisor if you are looking to buy Bitcoin. Um, so with the legal stuff out of the way. You know, you could be looking at a 236 right now or, you know, safer buy-ins really is going to be the 0 0.5 where this region of resistance you could expect. I would expect to flip into support um, and that would be a potential buy. But yeah, this is going to be a strong retracement to the 0 0.5. Uh, obviously, yeah, the 382 itself does have, you know, support as well. So there is support on the way down. Now we've actually managed to break out of it. Why is hence why I'd be looking at a wave four coming up for that wave five to the golden pocket okay so we have to be aware that the golden pocket is going to be strong resistance and then we'll have to really see how the reaction comes here if we get another wave up right now and it is not uh, just an a a b and a c if that is the abc then we could potentially uh just just fall that fall down right now and, and really that's why you want to give this maybe 24 hours 48 hours of confirmation to see if we hold this support level or if we you know really do break down the keys you're going to be looking at are your fibonacci levels Obviously, this morning, I did tweet out some key levels for you all. Um, oh, where is this? I, I, you know, I did. I, I remember posting it. Um, yeah, here it is. So, obviously, I was posting out the key key levels to be looking at 4,654 and really the resistance 5,181, which is from the bottom here. But, yeah, 4,654. And this was uh, 10 a.m. this morning. And, you know, this was just amazing because I managed to add in. I added into my long as we came down and tested it, bounced back up, come down and tested it again. This is, these are like two, three percent bounces each time, by the way. Uh, you know, the first one obviously being a three, nearly a four percent bounce. The second one that we saw was literally about a two percent bounce. Um, and these sculpts add up. OK, so these sculpts really, really do add up. Um, and that's just being able to identify the correct supports to be playing off of. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I really, really am loving it. You would not be surprised some of the trades that I've taken recently. Um, and I'm gonna let's cover that now. So let's cover the uh, elephant in the room, which obviously was my video yesterday with me entering into a big short position. Okay, so my short position yesterday. Let's cover this now. Oh, firstly, why I took the short. Okay, well I've I've kind of already documented why I took it, but let's just cover it in detail um, to show you why I took this short. So obviously yesterday I've been in uh, shorting Bitcoin a lot over the last year, by the way. <laughs> so this is nothing new for me. But um, yeah, obviously I was looking at this resistance area. 
And the reason I took a big short position is, is you have to remember, the more times a resistance is tested, the weaker it gets. Consolidation under resistance is bullish, okay? But for me, I was very comfortable with taking the risk of entering this short. As you all know from yesterday's video, I was, I was stressing that I was hedged. So I was in long positions on Bitcoin itself, on Binance and Bitfinex, and also I was long uh, in altcoins. So I was hedged. Um, but yeah, I still took this short position yesterday with stop losses obviously above the old the next wick of 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 in my my personal invalidation level okay so you know that's why i took this short position yesterday where i was you know i had a few different targets but the bottom was really going to be around 3600 to 3300 uh, to see how that went but the reason I took this short yesterday is because my risk was, was really quite low, you know, about two, three percent risk for me personally. I was very comfortable with it. Um, yeah. And obviously I was looking at more bearish signs and I was aware that the trend was bullish, um, you know, and this is my my personal choice. And I, I really highlighted it yesterday that I was hedged. But yeah, I took about a six thousand uh, dollar loss on this short position. So yeah, that that was uh, interesting to wake up to this morning. I was not expecting um, to wake up to that 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 loss, but uh, yeah, I literally am unaffected by it and can make that money back very easily. So you know, this is all part of trading, and you have to remember. I am actually very transparent with my trades. Those That was very transparent of me. And you have to just realize that no trader ever wins 100% of his trades, okay? It is impossible. And if you follow a trader that says they win 100% or never loses, I suggest that you probably unfollow them because it's literally not true. Um, and for me, this was just a really nice risk to reward ratio trade. And this is the sort of trade that I would take every single day, okay? When I have such a small risk, on the table for a potential gain, I'll take it. But yeah, as you'll know, I was hedged and I was aware of the potential uh, bullish outcomes. So with that just cleared up that I did t take a short yesterday, I did get stopped out of that short, but it was only for, you know, well, although it's quite a large loss, 6,000, uh, it was because my position was very big. So um, yeah, in, in total, like 3% loss, like, yeah, something like this. But obviously I got done by, sli uh, by uh, slippage. So uh, <laughs> this is the problem where I'm trying to close out and lots of other people are trying to close out. So you get a little bit of slippage there. But yeah, my hedges were very nice with my longs. So yeah, I'm really uh, happy with how it all played out. Um, so yeah, with that with that said, now where can we see get Bitcoin going now? I mean, really, I do would say you need to give this about 24, 48 hours. Or really, if you want to be very safe, wait and how this weekly closes. Why wait how the weekly closes? Because what I would like to just show here is obviously we've seen a very similar situation before. Okay, just look at this before you know, before you get too excited, very big wick, okay, very big wick, followed by a movement down. We could, we're two days into the week, we could potentially see a big wick, upper wick, with another move down, okay? This is something that you have to be aware of, um, and I tweeted this out earlier as well. Um, but yeah, you just have to be aware of, these are like patterns that we've seen before. Here we go, this was a nicer picture. Uh, so this is on Bitfinex, where you can just see a large upper wick, okay? Large upper wick, followed by a move back down. We could potentially see a large upper wick, followed by another move back down. So there is the potential of a bull trap here. You know, a lot of people will be FOMOing in right now. Uh, although I am in long positions, that it's no by no means FOMO. I have, uh, you know, very calculated trades. Um, but yeah, this is just something you have to be aware of. And that's why you could potentially wait for more confirmation on a weekly close to see how the weekly closes out. Really for me, 4,700 is um, very important. If we look down here on the daily. Okay, I'm going to go back to the bit for next exchange. There's a bit, uh, bit next, sorry. But 4,700 on the daily uh, is for me like a very important support level that would, you know, would, you'd prefer to see this hold really from around 4,400 if it's if it becomes back tested, a uh, big if, because there's going to be a lot of people wanting to buy in on the, on this retracement up to around, you know, really where we are now. I'm just looking left on the chart. You probably can't see, but looking left on the chart here, you would want to see this old region really holding as support okay you'd want to see this holding as support if you are a bull right now looking for i mean really this whole red box if you take in like lower consolidation that we've seen more recently or back um yeah you, you do want to be careful um you know if you are looking for longs early uh that's why for me i've been happily uh, i've been um, sculpt trading a lot today i've been sculpt trading bitcoin and sculpt trading altcoins very heavily uh because i wanted to gain some money today <laughs> uh, so i've been sculpting them heavily but i have not entered into a swing position yet on bitcoin why have i not entered into a swing position because for a swing position uh eg a position that i'm going to be holding for a week a month etc i prefer to get some more confirmation in here confirmation with time that requires time to see how this plays out 
So hence why I will happily scalp this uh, all day, <laughs> but I will not enter a swing position at the moment until I get some more confirmation. Okay, so I really want to see how we come down and hold this support, whether we close above this on the daily, whether we close above it on the weekly. Really for me, the daily, so what? We're going to be waiting for another, you know, a few hours time for the end of the day today to see how this weekly close for me, sorry, the daily closes. And it looks like we could potentially, but really I'm gonna be looking at 4,654. Let's see if we can close above here. It does look likely at the moment. So I believe that's everything that I wanted to say here on Bitcoin before I move on to Walton Chain. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to go through. I've probably missed a lot. <laughs> I had, a, had a, a big plan of what I wanted to go through, but I think that was everything for Bitcoin. Um, yeah, I will obviously do a video for you all tomorrow. Uh, hopefully tomorrow. We'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm just really, really busy at the moment still. But um, we'll obviously try and get a video for you all out, all out tomorrow. But yeah, I'm just really happy with how this is going. I now see like great potential uh, for trades. I mean, even if we just stayed in this range, this is a massive, massive range to be trading in. You have to remember that this is uh, literally a 11% range. So if we are to stay in this range, it's, you know amazing for a scopper like myself i would happily stay within this range where altcoins are then going to excel again you know altcoins obviously excel when bitcoin's going sideways not so much when bitcoin definitely not so much when bitcoin is is very volatile okay so bitcoins are likely to bleed uh, but i still entered into some positions today to you know get back that money <laughs> obviously uh been in a long over the last week on on Binance. Binance, you cannot margin trades, hence you can only go long, hence I'm holding Bitcoin. Why I am trading altcoins because obviously I was holding Bitcoin. So over, over, over on Binance, we can just see some crazy moves. Um, you know, look at this on Walton Chain. This was where Bitcoin dropped, okay? So no, sorry, Bitcoin went up. I'm so used to saying that it drops. Bitcoin went up heavily. Walton Chain got a retrace. Where did it retrace to? Absolutely perfect. Mamma mia. We retraced down to old resistance. Old, oh, sorry, old support here where we see support, you know, not, not too much, but here support resistance so this yellow arrow is yellow line is extremely important okay old support flipping into resistance here for the move down flipping into a little bit of consolidation here what did we get today during bitcoin's extreme move up obviously altcoins dump okay happens every single time okay so the altcoins obviously dump Walton chain retraces to the well this is what was not wasn't at the time the 618 okay but it was a it was a different fib 0.5 uh, actually might be the 32 let's just draw it out because i can't remember now offhand what it was okay yeah 0 0.5 okay so we were retracing down to the 0 0.5 but the main one obviously this old and it, you know, let's just stay zoomed in this old resistance cluster that you can expect to flip into support what did it do it flipped into support absolutely amazingly and this was a 40 percent wick <laughs> i mean 44 percent wick in in the matter of a few hours that's absolutely amazing from Walton Chain. Oh my god, thank you Walton Chain. I love you. Uh, <laughs> uh, you will know the good old gag that we've been following Walton Chain over the last week. Walton Chain, amazing. XLM, Stellar Lumens. Let's just go through another example of uh, amazing trades right here. Uh, this is just a perfect dump onto, where did we dump to? The Golden Pocket. Not just the Golden Pocket, but this right here, old resistance, resi support, support, resistance, 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 consolidation, what does it do? Flips into support and you get a 5% move up. This was another position that I got filled on and was, you know, happy about it. So those are a nice trades. And then I pu posted this one publicly. So uh, you have to be, um, yeah, you can be grateful about this. Obviously this was one that I posted on e ENG, um, Engine Coin. Uh, and this I posted and within like 10 minutes, it saw like a 5% pump. So, um, congratulations anyone that followed me in on this because as soon as i posted it on twitter it saw a pump but this was obviously then another 10 percent move up after that tweet and i did not try and cause any sort of pump but this was just a nice trade obviously from the bottom 13 percent, but from my tweet about 10 percent uh, why was i calling that because we firstly you have to remember how much this moved up okay we're talking about 800 percent 800 percent this was a coin that moved up 800 percent you are looking to buy retracements obviously originally i was looking at this as an as an a b c d e which never came to fruition okay so we obviously broke down from the a b c d e into what looks like an a a b and a c okay and if we just you know look for even more confirmation here of a one-to-one -one extension okay and you see here, you see the 618, you see the one-to-one. -one. Uh, uh, this, in my opinion, is just front running, okay? So when something's got a lot of confluence like this of targets, you front run the target, okay? That I haven't got all my position filled, by the way. <laughs> so uh, a little bit annoying. But, you yeah, know, this is where you'd be looking, obviously, at buying. 
okay between for example the 8x6 and placing a buy 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 where you might not have all your position fill because we haven't hit the full-on target but you sort of ladder into the position as it comes down or simply front run the 618 which is what's happened here so far okay bitcoin will be very important to you know see what potentially happens here but you know congratulations on anyone that followed me in on this call because you made an easy five percent uh, um yeah so that's very nice to see on engine coin and then obviously i've just gone through their xlm yeah so that's everything that i wanted to cover i mean wow i mean what a day of trading this for me is just perfect i absolutely love trading days like this this is why i am a, i am a trader um you know absolutely strive and love days like this you can also see this rounded on the rsi where the rsi made obviously very nice higher highs but yeah this is actually quite important let's let's mention this while we're looking at it the 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 height of the rsi right now 85 okay extreme overbought levels okay really is quite extreme 85 you would expect a a retracement from 85 on the daily uh, obviously the last time i were up this high was way back on the fourth of uh, the fourth of december and we all know what happened after this extreme this actually got up to 94 though that's majorly overbought and the last time before that the, the 9th of uh, 9th of may 17 again extremely overbought not quite reached those 90 levels yet but yeah sitting at 85 on the daily is is very overbought um, so yeah, you just have to be aware of some of these levels, uh, some of these exponential moving averages. Let's just take a look at a few more EMAs while I've got you all here. Um, so a few more EMAs to keep an eye on here. Okay, so obviously uh, this is, uh, yeah, the monthly 21 is obviously going to be important. Weekly uh, for me is uh, very important, obviously getting, you know, very closely seeing the weekly 55 exponential moving average here, you know, really acting as resistance. But then on the way back down, we do also have the, obviously our supports daily. We are, I, I've already covered it, haven't I? Yeah, the, the 200 daily exponential moving average, obviously keen, you know, important support to be looking at now. So yeah, that is a lot of information that I've given you all here. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video and it has been very beneficial for you of what you can be looking at, knowing that we've hit some targets, but uh, you know, the potential of seeing a four and then a five coming back up. And then you'd have to see, obviously, uh, this is a major resistance point. Um, so yeah, you want to be like careful of this resistance. Uh, it would you would expect it to be resistance. You'd e you're either gonna get rejected from it and come back down, or um, literally destroy everyone trying to short it and smash straight through. Um, but obviously, short term, you want to be keeping your eye on this really key resistance, really key support, and see if we manage to hold the support and come back up, or lose the support and come back down. Okay uh really that would be key if we hold it and then we can come back up and move up like this or literally whether we whether we get rejected and, and we don't manage to hold the 200 here uh if we do manage to close you know for example where we are right now then i would be looking to play this range and then potentially move up again for wave five uh wave five target uh, but that's what I'm looking at right now. And yeah, while I remember, I will upload this uh, bullish Elliott wave count that I done uh, about two weeks ago. Although it will be like a past one. I've done it recorded, so I might as well upload it. Um, yeah, I will upload it some point this week, I imagine. Or maybe next week or the weekend. Whenever I get time to do that upload uh, and editing. So, because uh, it's not fully edited. So, yeah, I hope that you've had enjoyed this video. Uh, please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed uh, a comment of whether you believe um, the bear market is over. Do you believe the bear market is over? Were you also? Let's, yeah, let's get a few opinions. I'm very interested in what my followers are doing. So uh, do you believe the bear market is over or do you think this is a bull trap? Are you looking at this as an ABC and we are now coming down? Or do you think this is a one, two, three, four, five and we've finished our correction at the bottom right here? Oh, um, I've got an assignment marked. Very nice. Um, so, yeah, that's just a question that I give to you all. Uh, please leave me a comment down below and let me know. And also, were you longing yesterday into that resistance or were you shorting into the resistance? Obviously, I was in a short position. But if you look here at the risk to rewards, the short risk to rewards were obviously, uh, you know, nice because the, the, there was a clear invalidation level. But you have to remember with the long positions, if you were taking a long right there, your stop loss would have been, you know, quite big. Where, where were your targets? So, yeah, how, there's obviously a lot of different ways if you were on the inverse head and shoulders you obviously smashed it the hardest <laughs> but yeah i'm very interested to know what you all find and traded that uh, so i hope you've enjoyed and yeah thank you everybody so much for watching i'll catch you in the next one cheers <laughs> bye